In today's video, I am putting my best macro skills to use in video, shooting a product commercial that looks just like this. Usually on this channel, I show how I take macro still images using a variety of techniques, but today it's all about video because I'm going to be shooting a short video on this beer. Now, this is weirdly a beer launched by a phone company called Nothing, and I'm shooting a video for CNET. Now, I do a lot of product photography for CNET, and product photography is a great way of putting macro skills to use because you're often photographing small objects quite close up, getting those details, making sure that the focus and the lighting is right to make that product look as good as it can. So I always find that there is a huge crossover between the skills I use when I'm out in the countryside taking a photo of, say, a mushroom, and the skills I use when I'm in my studio taking photos of a phone. So I'm gonna show you how I translate those skills into product photography, but specifically, it's actually product videography today. Now, if you're into your macro and you've never tried doing video, then I really recommend giving it a go because it's a fun way of adding a new dimension to your shots. Whenever I do product photo shoots for CNET, whether that is in still form or in video, I always try and theme the shot. Now, in this case, the beer is just a plain white can, very simple black text going along it. So I'm trying to replicate that minimalist aesthetic of the can in the whole scene. So I'm going for plain whites, no other colors, very high key. In fact, my plan is that the only color that's gonna be visible in the whole thing will be the yellowy orange of the beer itself. When I was shooting Nothing's latest phone launch for CNET, that phone was all about the flashing lights on the back, so I tried to lean into that by theming a photo shoot that involved a lot of lights going on in the production. No matter what you're shooting, whether it is a product like a phone or a can of drink, or if you're out and about shooting leaves and mushrooms and things, that it's so important to really think about how you're putting that whole scene together. So with product photography, it's not just about the product itself, it's about the whole sets that you create, the aesthetics, the colors and the light, how everything comes together to tell the story of whatever it is you're shooting. So a little bit more time spent in that pre-production phase thinking about how you're going to tell your story, the better the shots you're gonna get. And that's true whether you're doing video like this or whether you are taking stills. So this is essentially my main set. We've got the cans of beer right now on a piece of mirrored perspex. And my backdrop is actually just two pieces of diffusion material that I've sort of looped over my background support frame. I'm using diffusion material here because I've got behind it one of my lights and that is going to really shine through and light up this whole thing when it's switched on. It gives a really nice effect when I'm lighting this from behind rather than lighting at, at it. The main light lighting the cans is a small rig RC450B. Now this is a very powerful 400 watt LED light, which I'm gonna need later when I'm using some lenses. But I've got a big round softbox on the front with a grid on it, and that's gonna light up these cans really nicely. I'm shooting this on the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Now the quality from this camera is absolutely beautiful. It's often used in professional productions. It's shooting in raw footage, so I can add a lot of color and contrast to that footage later on. And it's saving directly to this external SSD. And you can see it's sitting on a slider. This is one from Edelkrone that's got a power unit on the back that allows me to control the back and forth motion using my phone. So it's really good for getting smooth motion at very slow speeds, which is ideal when I'm doing product stuff. So I was talking before about the aesthetics that I'm going for in this shot, wanting to be very high key, very, very uh, minimal in terms of color and design. But I've also created something of a short shot list. Now, to be honest, this is hilariously bad. I am not one with a pencil. That is why I'm a photographer, not a drawer. But I've got four main shots that I know that I want to get. I might get some others, but because this video is only really going to appear on social channels, maybe Instagram Reels and TikTok, I'm only shooting for around 15 seconds. So to be honest, these four different shots is probably all I'm going to need. 
It's really kind of good to plan out the shots that you want. So you can start thinking about how you might want to light it, the lenses you might want to use and the different camera movements. My first one is basically this setup here when we've got all the cans stacked up in a nice V shape. Now I've done a similar shot with some Guinness cans recently uh, in a different video, but that was just for stills when I showed about how I focus stacked and how I lit that scene. That one was very much dark. It was very low key to fit in with the typical black aesthetic of a Guinness can. Whereas these are all white. And so that is why we are going super high key. I'm going to turn on my overhead light with this control panel, bing, and then turn on our background light as well. And now we're lit up and I can turn on the camera. That always helps. So this is gonna be my first shot. And it is this sort of hero of having uh, the main can here close up to the camera. I'm shooting with a wide angle lens to give this nice heroic perspective. Because I've got this mirrored perspex, we have got this lovely reflection of the cans here. And I've made sure to kind of line them up in a way where we can see the main text, this beer 5.1% clearly on each one, they're evenly spaced, everything should look nice. I'm manually focusing, if you can see where it's a little bit red here, that's because I've got something called focus peaking turned on, on the camera. Now that just sort of visualizes where that focus is. And in fact, as I turn focus, you can see that it changes from the text on the front and then changes to the text on the next cans and the rear cans as that focus changes. Just makes it very easy to see exactly which part of the scene is in focus. Seeing where that focus is, is gonna be really important because what I'm gonna do using the slider is move the camera away from the beers and then back towards them. And as I do, that focus point is going to change. As I pull away, if I don't move that focus, then the cans will simply become blurry. So I'm gonna to have to make sure that I change that focus at the same rate as the camera is moving away. And I'm gonna do that with a follow focus wheel that I've attached here. Now that just lets me get a little bit more control over that focus wheel and hopefully will allow me to follow the focus as the camera moves. But having this focus peaking visualized on screen is really gonna help me make sure that I nail this shot. So first of all, I'm connecting my phone to the slider. Now that is just going to mean that I can now control where it's going simply with my phone which is a lot easier than trying to do it manually while also turning the wheel. So I'm gonna start off with my camera positioned about here and I'm gonna call that on the app pose one and then I'm gonna slide it further forwards to here. Maybe a little bit away because I think the front of a lens just touched this, which I don't want. And I'm gonna call that pose two. Now I can simply tap and the camera will automatically make that movement for me. That if I get my focus now on this can right at the front, I'll press record that as I press pose two and the camera starts to move forwards, I was able to just ever so slightly turn that focus wheel, maintaining that focus on the can right at the front. And just in case I didn't get it, I'm going to do this a few times. I'm going to send it backwards and then forwards again, each time just turning that wheel, making sure that the text right at the front of that can is staying highlighted in red and therefore in focus. So the next shot that I've got in mind is a close up of actually opening the can, gripping that ring pull, opening it up, hopefully maybe getting a little bit of spray coming out, but maybe not. So I've done a few things. One, I've switched to my 100 mil macro lens. So it gives a really nice close up view on the top of the can, which is great as I really wanna show that detail. But what I've also done is just given it a bit of a spray with a misting bottle. Now that spray on there is just trying to give the impression that this is a cold can. Maybe it's straight from the fridge and it started to bead up with that condensation. Uh, this is a test can that I've already opened. So I better move that one out of the way. And I'll pop a fresh one in its place and I'll get things set up. So I've got a fresh can in place and you can see my framing here. It's really, really tight on that ring pull. But as you can also see, I've turned off my overhead light. Instead, I'm just having it lit from behind the can with our background light. That's giving some really nice contrast on the can. It really brings out the shape of that ring pull. 
because if I turned on that overhead light as well, whoa, I mean, it's far too bright. So let's just turn that intensity right down. You can see that it basically kills quite a lot of that contrast and ambience that we've got. And while generally in this video, I'm wanting it to be quite uh, high key, um, I just think that this is a little bit too much. Actually now turning it off, it looks a little bit too dark. So maybe I find a happy medium and I have the light on, but I just bring down the intensity to something like this, which I think is a nice balance. And this is exactly the same way that I work with my macro stills lighting. I'll adjust that lighting. I'll add some more in, see how that looks. Maybe then take it away afterwards. It's about that balance, that trial and error of adjusting a little bit more here and there to find how you want your shot to look. But I haven't got any of the misting spray on this yet, so I'm just gonna give that a bit of a going over just to give it that sort of wet look. And I'm shooting this at, I'm actually gonna to go to F8 for sharpness. So I am actually going to bring back up this light a little bit. And I'm also slightly gonna increase the ISO speed to ISO 320. And I'm gonna adjust my focus. Again, I've got that focus peaking on the can. I want it nice and in the middle across where it's going to open. And I'm just gonna practice gripping the can and my hand's gonna come in. In fact, I think I need to slightly move it like this. I don't have that many cans to get the opening wrong. So I'm hoping this one's gonna work quite well for me. So I've started recording, grip the can Get my hand in place. I'm sort of moving my fingers in a weird way, just so I'm not blocking the light. Three, two, one. I got it wrong. Ah! <laughs> I didn't do it properly. Oh, okay. Well, let's bring in another. I think what I might do is just slightly back the camera up. And that hopefully is just gonna give me a little bit more room for error, basically. Because I'm shooting at almost 6K resolution, I'm only gonna be putting this out in 4K or maybe even 1080 for social. So um, I've got quite a lot of resolution to play with. So I can always shoot a bit wider and then crop in closer in post. So I'm looking across the can rather than just looking down on it. So again, Put in a little bit of that mist. I'm also shooting this at high frame rates. It's actually at uh, 50 frames a second, so that when I play this back at 24 frames a second, it's got a little bit of slow motion, which might be quite nice if we do get any spray kicking up from the can. So, as before, I'm recording, gripping the can. Hands are in place. Three, two, one. That one was much better. So that brings me on to what is definitely gonna be the hardest shot to get. Uh, now that is gonna be a shot of beer swirling into a glass with the camera pulling away. Now I'm gonna shoot that with the Lauer probe lens. Now this lens is pretty common in a lot of uh, sort of commercial videos. You've probably seen lots of videos on Instagram of alike using this lens. Uh, this is basically it's going to allow the lens to be inside the camera and then I can pour the beer in around it and I will move the lens out as the beer swirls in. Now it could look like a really, really cool shot. I've definitely seen this done very, very well in other videos. I've never tried it myself. So it's gonna be a bit of an experiment. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes. But there are a few things that I've kind of done in advance, which I'm hoping is gonna let me gonna get better results. One of them is that I've had a couple of beers open for actually now a couple of days. The reason being is that if I had fresh beer that's full of all those bubbles, when I pour it into the glass, what's gonna happen is that it'll immediately froth up and probably obscure the lens and it won't give quite as clean a pour. So I think that by using basically flat stale beer, maybe sure I wouldn't wanna drink it as much, but it's gonna look much better in this shot. 
Now the other thing I've got is a classic milk bottle. Now I've tested various ways of pouring the beer into this pint glass that we're going to use as our actual uh, glass in the film. And pouring from the can isn't going to work because it doesn't give a smooth flow. It gives that sort of glug, 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 glug sort of look coming out of the, uh, the spout on the can. So what we need is quite a wide neck that allows for a fast pour, and it's that fast pour that's going to allow the beer to swirl around the glass, um, hopefully giving a nice swirl around the lens. So I've already spent some time testing various different pouring receptacles, and actually a classic milk bottle seemed to be the best option. So I'm just going to pour this in. But I think actually I'm going to add to that, it might be a little too flat, so I'm going to use one of the beers that I've just opened and I'm going to add that to it so that it's still got some bubbles to it, just maybe not um, enough to really overflow as I'm shooting. So I've got something of a setup here. I've uh, propped up this, uh, this beer glass um, using a bit of a clamp and propping it up on a can. And I've tried to get my slider on the same incline as the glass so that as the camera moves back, hopefully the lens will evenly slide out of the glass. Unfortunately, using the power module isn't going to work here because there's too much weight on that unit to allow it to move the camera up and down. So instead, I've got this other module that basically slows down the movement. It adds a lot of tension. So hopefully, as I just sort of let it go, it will sort of slowly slide down. But I still think that what I'm gonna to have to do is manually just pull this back up with one hand and pour the beer in with the other. It's gonna be tricky, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it, particularly because the angle I've got the glass here, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do a convincing pour. I'm gonna give it a go. Got an old towel on standby just in case something goes wrong. And the other thing I've done here is I've changed uh, out that soft box and replaced it instead with a reflector. Now this is basically gonna concentrate that light on the glass because uh, this lens is minimum f14, but I'm actually gonna be shooting at um, f, about f20 for this but I'm also going to be uh, increasing the shutter, uh, not the shutter speed, the frame rate to 120 frames a second. That is going to let less light in, so I'm going to need to really throw as much light at this glass as I can do. And I want 120 frames a second because I want to use slow motion for that beer cascading into the glass. I think that's how it's going to look best. So I've got my camera set up now at 120 frames a second. That does mean that I'm now only shooting at uh, full HD rather than 6K because it can't do 6K at 120 frames. Um, I've adjusted my white balance and I think I've adjusted my focus at a good point, but I'm not really that sure. Should I focus on the end of the glass? Should I focus closer up to the lens to get the beer swirling around it? I think that's going to be one of those things that will be a little bit trial and error. So I think the only thing I can do is give it a go. I'm going to do a little practice because the motion I'm going to need, so I'm going to have the camera starting from here and I'm going to pour the beer around the lens, hopefully quite a lot of it at once as I pull the lens back. Is it going to work? I've no idea. I've never tried this. The camera's running. Are we ready? Did that work? Absolutely no idea. Well, I've just had a look back and I would say that it sort of worked. We got that rushing in of the beer, but it very quickly swirled around the lens. And what I'm looking for is more to kind of see the glass filling up rather than it immediately hitting the lens. I think the way I'm gonna fix that is by doing it again, but just having the camera about an inch higher so that that lens is slightly higher up in the glass. I think that's gonna make a lot of difference. Let's see if I can rescue some of this beer back in the bottle. And just reuse the glass. 
I'm reasonably confident that I can get the shot I want. The only thing I do have is that on the bottom of the glass is an Ikea stamp. Uh, and when I'm focused in really close, it is visible, but I'm not sure whether it's gonna spoil the shot because probably once the beer is in, it's gonna cover it up. So maybe it's not an issue, I don't know. But I'm already recording, so I'm gonna start pulling back don't think I did a very good pour that time. And I also think I need to pull back a little quicker. Actually, that was okay, but definitely I think the focus is an issue because I think at the nicest point where I got a nice swirl coming in, I can see that it isn't in focus. I think my lens is a little bit too far away. So I need to, I think, pull that focus to be a bit further away but the motion I think was actually all right. So let's try that again. I'm recording. Let's see if that worked. Not especially. It just sort of filled the glass up. What I wanted is a bit more of the swirl going around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the camera again, slightly tilt the lens up a bit more. I think what I need though, slightly faster pour, slightly faster pull out. The camera is running. I need a much more aggressive pour. The videos I've seen where people have done this before, very high-end productions, they've got all kinds of long slides for the liquid to come in at exactly the right angle, at exactly the right speed to create that kind of spiral as it goes into the glass. This is basically just me in my office trying to get the same results and I think I'm coming up against some limitations here. So I'm not necessarily hoping to achieve or expecting to achieve absolute spot-on commercial results here. I just basically wanna see how close I can get. But I think my focus might have been a little bit better on that one. Camera's rolling. That one got a little bit of the swirl, split second. I think I might have got a poor shot that I'm at least slightly happy with. So hopefully in the various takes that I've tried, I've got something that might work. So I'm going for this last shot now, and it's the one with the beer in the glass and the can next to it. I've been having a little trouble lighting this because what I really want is to keep that very high key, almost pure white uh, background with the reflection. Um, so I've been kind of playing around with the powers of my different lights. I've removed the grid off this softbox so that the light can spread out more evenly. But I've also found that because the light's coming down from a bit of an angle, we've got a quite a hard shadow on the left side of the can. So what I'm actually gonna do is bring in this piece of white polystyrene that I use very often in my product photography. And as I do, just look at the difference that it makes to those shadows on the can without very dark on the left-hand side with suddenly we've got a really nice evenly lit can. It also gives a nice reflection on the left of the, of the, uh, of the glass. Ideally, if this was a still photo, that reflection would be a little bit more over here. But if I do, then it's slightly less obvious um, uh, on the light on the can. So I'm just gonna see if I've got anything a little bit bigger, like a big piece of white car that I can use instead. Oops. So instead I could maybe bring in this big piece of white card. And that's basically gonna do the same job as long as I can keep it out of shot. 
So for this last shot, I wanna have a bit of a pour of the beer because then it's gonna create that little bit of foam, that head on top, which is gonna make it look like a much nicer image. Um, without that, the beer is gonna look a little bit flat and lifeless and that doesn't really look that good. Uh, there are various ways that food photographers will add foam to drinks. Uh, you can use like effervescent tablets or bicarbonate of soda, but I wanna keep it looking a little bit as natural as I can. And I quite like the idea of maybe finishing with a bit of a pour, that head might rise and then it'll settle down. Also, I wanna drink the beer afterwards. I don't want it to go to waste, so I don't wanna put bicarb in it or anything that I wouldn't want to then drink. So I've got the glass mostly full. It's looking nicely exposed because of that background light. The actual orange of the beer is glowing really, really nicely. My reflector is reflecting that light in perfectly. I'm gonna start recording and I'm gonna just pour this beer in from above. I'm sorry you can't see this. Okay. That was great. What I actually got then in that pouring was a little bit of overflow. That foam really fizzed up, spread over the top, came down. I actually really like how that looked. So I'm hoping that's gonna work really well. But I do think that that is the last shots that I wanna get. I've done all of the major ones that I planned out. I've done some extra ones too. So I'm gonna take all of this over onto my computer and we'll see about the edit. So after piecing all of those parts together and doing a little bit of color grading magic in DaVinci Resolve, this is what it looks like. And to be honest, the edit really wasn't all that difficult because so much of our color and our contrast and everything else we got right in camera when I actually shot the footage. So we can take a look in DaVinci Resolve here. And these are some of the clips that I've used in the shot. And it's pretty basic editing. So if we take a look at this shot, the one of the main opening hero images of the beer cans all lined up, this is what the shot looks like now. And this is what it looked like straight out of camera. Now I shot this in uh, Blackmagic's raw format, so it looks very, very flat, very gray. So all I really needed to do is bring up the exposure, bring up the contrast, a little bit of color adjustment to make it look a little bit more uh, blue rather than uh, warmer. I really haven't done anything that complicated here. And then same goes for shots that have got more color like this. If we just turn this uh, node off, you can see that it's all still there. It's just more desaturated and lifeless, which is the point of shooting in RAW. So I've simply just increased the exposure, increased the contrast, a little bit of mid-tone contrast, that's basically like clarity, and I have upped that saturation. And then finally, I've done the same on this one as well, because I wanted to make sure that there's no color in this, uh, in this whole sequence, except for the orange of the beer. So I've just selectively pumped up the orange here, and that's pretty much it. If we just turn that off, that's what our shot looked like, straight out of camera, and then this is what we've done. So for the rest of the edit, I have done things like increase the speed on this sideways sliding shot so that it gets a nice fast movement. I've done the same on this shot, going over the tops of the ring pulls. And I've added a zoom in in post onto the ring pull opening. And then I found a soundtrack, something that was quite punchy and vibrant that I think lends itself well to a beer commercial. And it's a pretty basic tactic, but I've made sure that I've edited to the beat of the song. In particular, there's a loud, hey. <laughs> and I made sure to line that hey up with the ring pull opening, which I think looks pretty cool. But of course, video editing is an absolutely huge topic all by itself. And that isn't really what I do on this channel. So I'm not gonna go too deep into that side of things here. If you are interested, then do please let me know and maybe it's something I could do a follow up on, but um, I think it's going a little bit too far for most people. But that does bring me to an end of today's video. Um, has been a little bit different, focusing more on video techniques, but still very much keeping within that macro world. 
And I really hope my regular macro viewers still get plenty out of it. And maybe there are some new people that are wanting to kind of experiment with video in their macro photography. If you have enjoyed it, do please hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. I will roll the video one more time and I will see you next time.